Right now, rural Wisconsin is being hit hard by substance abuse. How a local program is expanding to help address the issue. This man has a long criminal history and a recent DOC warrant lists him as armed and dangerous. Plus a Madison toddler, the victim of an apparent homicide. What we know tonight about how the child died and about the man in custody. And convicted murderer Chandler Halderson sets the stage for an appeal as he makes a change in his defense team. News 3 Now at 10 starts right now. One of the reasons that this has become such a focus and is so important is because of the opioid epidemic. State Attorney General Josh Call reminding people that this Saturday is National Drug Take Back Day, the annual campaign to get rid of unused or unwanted prescription drugs at disposal locations all across the state. But that's just one way our state is tackling substance abuse. A program started by the UW School of Medicine and the Wisconsin Hospital Association is now expanding. And as Brad Hamilton explains, they want to train rural health care workers on how to care for people who show signs of substance abuse. Brad? Eric, health officials we spoke with say rural communities communities in our state need more resources when it comes to substance abuse treatment, and they believe that this program will help. Dr. Randall Brown says there is not a better feeling than helping someone in need. And based on his team's research, there is a clear need within the state's rural communities right now. We've been seeing um, a lot of trends going in the wrong direction so far as substance use goes. The main source of that problem. Fairly clear, particularly in, in rural areas that sort of specialist treatment facilities may not really have the capacity to sort of fully address what's going on. Which is why UW School of Medicine and the Wisconsin Hospital Association are teaming up and they're now helping teach rural health care workers to identify and treat patients with substance abuse issues. It's an approach that WHA's Nadine Allen says is unconventional. I think it, it is a little bit different and I think we're always trying to continuously improve. But a necessary one, bringing the proper patient care closer to those that are too far away from the current facilities. And find um, the best ways to reach you know, our patients where they are. Not everyone can be near to one of those larger facilities and receive the care that they need. With the hope that eventually these trained health care workers will be able to provide on-call and hands-on support, providing those resources to those that need it most right now. You know, you can really have some tremendous impact on an individual's life. The program is funded by a million dollar grant from the Wisconsin Partnership Program. Brad, thank you. And new tonight, SSM Health Monroe Hospital being recognized for its patient care. The American College of Surgeons today verifying the hospital as a level three trauma center. The process to earn this verification started in early 2020. And there are now just 41 hospitals with that designation in all of Wisconsin. A look now at your certified most accurate forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Uh, temperatures are below normal. What else is new? Lots of clouds today. That didn't help. The Time lapse from the WIC Sky Camp showed clouds from sunup till sundown. And in fact, it's still kind of cloudy out there now, although the clouds are starting to break up a little bit. But those clouds didn't bring any precipitation to southern Wisconsin. A few light showers out over Door County, and that's about the nearest precipitation of any consequence. High temperatures today briefly got up to 49 in Madison and 50 in Janesville, but now we've dropped to 39 in both locations. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 30s for most of the rest of southern Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan. By tomorrow morning, we'll clear out with temperatures down to around 30 degrees. Tomorrow should be a partly sunny, breezy, and chilly day with a high of only 46. Be in the mid-40s for Wednesday as well, and then see some shower chances as we head toward the end of the week. I'll tell you what we can expect as far as temperatures are concerned in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. A young child, not even two years old, killed early this morning on Madison's west side. And tonight, police have named their suspect, this man, 23-year-old Marshawn Giles. He is in custody. The city's police chief addressing the case this afternoon. Sometimes it's difficult to understand how someone could do something like this. It's a painful day for the family who's directly involved, the community, myself, who's trying to understand why and how something like this could happen, and the officers who responded to what we consider the worst call uh, you can get in police work. Officers were sent to Schrader Road at about 2.45 this morning where police say they found a critically injured 20-month-old girl. She was rushed to a hospital 
where she was pronounced dead. Police say a woman was also seriously injured in a domestic-related assault. Police Chief Barnes described her injuries as being consistent with blunt force trauma. She was taken to a local hospital and is expected to survive. We have a more in-depth breakdown of this case on our website, channel3000.com, including past child abuse investigations involving the suspect. And in Chippewa Falls in northwestern Wisconsin, police there looking for information and potential suspects after a missing 10-year-old girl was found dead today. Lily Peters' body was discovered this morning. According to police, her family last saw her yesterday. Someone found her body in the woods not far from the Leinenkugel's brewery parking lot. Right now, no one is in custody. And in Milwaukee, a weekend filled with gun violence. More than a dozen shootings left three dead, including a 13-year-old girl. 19 others were injured. Milwaukee police say four people have been arrested. Milwaukee on pace to break another record when it comes to homicides for the third year in a row. Before this weekend, city data shows there were 62 homicides in the first four months of 2022. Over the same period last year, the city was at 42. Continuing coverage tonight, public court records show Chandler Halderson has hired a new attorney as he hopes to appeal his conviction and life sentence for killing and dismembering his parents. After being represented by two public defenders during his multi-week homicide trial, Halderson is now being represented by Madison Area Criminal Defense Attorney Michael Edward Covey. Now, Halderson voiced his desire to seek an appeal during his sentencing hearing, asking for attorneys to reach out to him if they were interested in helping him file an appeal. He is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And in a major national case, a mistake during jury selection forcing a Florida judge to restart the sentencing trial of 2018 Parkland High School shooter Nicholas Cruz and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooter. He pleaded guilty to 17 counts of murder, 17 counts of attempted murder back in October. The judge says a miscommunication will mean the jury selection process will now need to start over. The jury will ultimately help decide the fate of Cruz who does face the death penalty. New video tonight, police in Ohio say a disaster narrowly avoided when a dump truck out of control missed a school bus full of kids by mere inches. Police say the truck's driver realized his brakes were not working as he was approaching the stopped school bus. Well, amazingly, as you see there, he was able to barely squeeze the careening truck past the bus and another vehicle, avoiding what police say would have been a catastrophic incident. We're seeing new video of the accidental shooting scene on the set of the movie Rust. The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office has released the video and several additional documents with the ongoing investigation. Now, these files include body cam footage, crime scene photos, witness interviews, and all other pieces of evidence. Last week, OSHA fined the production company more than one $136,000 for safety violations. A vital escape route for Ukrainians under attack today after Russian forces struck five railway stations. The attacks come just a day after the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made an unannounced visit to the region. They are the highest level officials to visit since the invasion began. Gloria Pasmino has more. Russian forces are aiming at one of the few ways out of war-torn Ukraine. The state railway company said five train stations were struck in central and western Ukraine Monday, resulting in casualties. The railway attack comes just a day after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made an unannounced visit to the region. We believe that they, we can win, they can win if they have the right uh, equipment, the right support. They are the highest level U.S. officials to visit Ukraine since the invasion began. Blinken said other U.S. diplomats will return later this week and praised Ukraine for standing strong against attacks in some parts of the country. Russia continues to try to brutalize parts of the country and the death and destruction uh, that we continue to see is horrific. But Ukrainians are standing up, they're standing strong. Meanwhile, there seems to be no reprieve for the besieged city of Mariupol, where a steel plant continues to be a significant holdout site for Ukrainian forces and civilians taking shelter. Video released by the Azov Regiment this Sunday reportedly shows women and children in a bunker at the steel plant. On behalf of all the people of Mariupol, I urge the world, help us, we want to live. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. Next at 10, another Republican throwing his hat in the race in hopes of taking on Governor Evers later this year. Tim Michaels officially launched his campaign today. Enough of the political bickering. 
Enough of the left and the right not getting along. We've got to bring people together, sit down, work this stuff out, and with proper leadership, we will get this state on the right path to great success. Michael's a multimillionaire construction company co-owner and a U.S. Army veteran and vows to run an aggressive campaign. He also indicated he would largely self-fund, saying he would not accept donations from political action committees, lobbyists, or more than $500 from any one individual. He joins an already crowded field, including former Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish, Kevin Nicholson, State Representative Tim Ranthan. The primary August 9th, the winner will advance to face Governor Evers. With Michael's announcement, you can expect to see even more political ads. Michael's has purchased more than $900,000 worth of ads already. At the same time, a PAC supporting Rebecca Clayfish has also made a six-figure radio ad buy. This is all more than three months before the primary, six months before the general election. And experts say at this point, it's largely about the candidates defining themselves. Maybe a little early. I think right now, the audience for these ads are the people who are the most interested in politics, the people who have uh, um, a, a, a known desire to vote in the primary, and they're trying to figure out who do I want to vote for. Now, back in September, a group affiliated with Kevin Nicholson spent $1.5 million touting the candidate, who at the time was mulling either a run for governor or U.S. Senate. Tim Ranthan, also running for governor on the Republican side, has not announced any ad spending just yet. A New York judge holding former President Trump in civil contempt. It comes after the state's attorney general's office said the former president did not comply with a subpoena for documents as part of its investigation into his company. Today, the judge said he is fining Trump $10,000 a day until he complies. A Trump attorney said Trump simply doesn't have the types of written communications being sought, but has produced hundreds of thousands of documents through his assistance. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis today signing a controversial sweeping voting overhaul bill that establishes a new election police force, giving his administration a new way to probe election crimes. Election fraud is rare. Florida's Secretary of State's office says it referred only 75 fraud complaints to law enforcement or prosecutors in 2020. President Biden, meanwhile, hosting the Tampa Bay Lightning at the White House today, the team the winner of the 2020 and 21 NHL Stanley Cup championships. During his remarks, the president thanked the team for their philanthropy and for opening up its arena to vaccinate Tampa residents. The team presented the president with a number 46 jersey and invited him to attend a victory boat parade. And still to come tonight, your full forecast for the rest of the work week and the first panels installed today on a massive new solar farm. We'll tell you where it's going up. That's next. Madison Magazine's Best of Madison 2022. Vote for your favorites online, including Buck and Honey's for the Best of Madison in seven food and drink categories. Vote Buck and Honey's today at madisonmagazine.com. New in 2022, with the iCare Benefit Card, members have access to even more. In addition to receiving up to $1,200 per year in over-the-counter health items, members get a $50 monthly allowance for healthy food purchases and can earn rewards for completing healthy activities like getting a flu shot. Call the iCare Benefits Helpline for a free consultation to get all the benefits you're entitled to. Rest easy. iCare is looking out for you and your health. Over these past months, we've all experienced changes and a great deal of reflection. But here's a change you can truly be excited about. Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, permanently removes the fat from your stomach, hips and thighs, and back. I walked past mirrors. I didn't want to see any of that. I can't even tell you how excited I am about Sonobello and what they've done for me. I'm just living my best life now because I'm being the best that I can be. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation. Plus, get $250 off instantly. You deserve to do something for you. Call 1-888-512-1753 or go to sonobello.com now. This is a town called Basic. Where the townspeople are happy with a basic lifestyle. And that's a 2022 Nissan Altima with more attitude, more style. And a powerful turbocharged engine to help put BASIC in your rear view forever. Looks like BASIC will never be the same. The 2022 Nissan Altima. Anything but BASIC. Now get 0.9% financing for up to 72 months on 14 models. 
introducing Madison Magazine's Best of Madison 2022. Vote for your favorites online, including Buck and Honey's, for the Best of Madison in seven food and drink categories. Vote Buck and Honey's today at madisonmagazine.com. A familiar name in the 608 is giving senior citizens a new choice for drop-in care and social support. Tomorrow, Josh Breider takes you on a tour. And an end to our dry street. We'll be timing out our chances of precipitation tomorrow morning from 430 to 7. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. Four crew members of the first all-private mission to the International Space Station are back safe. The SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule splashed down to the Atlantic off the coast of Florida this afternoon. Their mission, dubbed AX-1, launched April 8th. It was scheduled for 10 days, but it dragged on a week longer than expected due to some weather delays. Twitter this afternoon announcing it is selling the company to Elon Musk for about $44 billion. The news comes 11 days after the Tesla and SpaceX CEO shocked the industry by offering to buy the social media giant. The deal will put the world's richest man in charge of one of the world's most influential social media platforms in a tweet today. Musk says he hopes his biggest critics stay on the platform to help bolster free speech. The first solar panels at Align Energy new North Rock solar project in Northern Rock County were installed today. Representatives for the company held a golden panel installation ceremony at the site just southwest of Edgerton. This afternoon, Align Energy expects the 473-acre project to generate enough power to supply nearly 13,000 homes. The project's set to go online in the first half of 2023. Well, check it out. GM says it'll produce a fully electric Corvette. The company's general manager announcing the plans in a LinkedIn post this morning. He didn't say when the electric Corvette would come, but hinted that a hybrid model could come relatively soon. The post implies the hybrid Corvette will be based on the current generation of the car, but it's not clear if the all-electric version will be a variation of this car or a completely different future model. Workers at three local Starbucks stores filed for union representation today, joining a growth trend across the country. They're the locations on Tri Triverton Pike in Fitchburg, Monona Drive in Monona, and University Avenue in Madison. Workers at the Starbucks on East Main Street in Madison filed for union representation last month. UW-Madison, once again, one of the top 30 universities on the planet. According to the Center for World University Rankings, UW came in at 27th worldwide, 20th nationally. Last year, it was ranked 25th worldwide, 19th nationally. This year, the school lost two places at the University of Washington, and Kyoto University. Legos are opening up a world of possibilities and the Brickworld exhibition this weekend at the Wisconsin State Fair Park showcased that. If you thought Legos were just a bunch of small bricks for kids, you are wrong. This exhibit is where potential careers for artists, engineers, and architects begins. It can open up your imagination to the world. It's fun to build with and you can do anything with it. You can build anything with them, so you could build whatever you want. Organizers say they hope that the era of postponing and rescheduling the exposition is over and they can now make April the consistent month that they will have Brickworld return to Milwaukee every year. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti now with a look at a chilly week ahead, Gary, for this time of the year. I think it's a day to stay inside and play with the Legos. There's a few of those I, coming our way. I had Legos when I was a it kid. It doesn't surprise me. Come, that your uh, weather kit. And your got little, an erector set, all, too, but no, the, that's another story. There you go. <laughs> Become a scientist. Anything to stay warm, right? Uh, you don't need a scientist to tell you that it's going to stay chilly. And three things you need to know in the forecast. High temperatures will only be in the 40s for tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. We'll see some showers starting Thursday off and on through the weekend and through the middle part of next week. Below normal temperatures, well, at least for the next 10 days. On Doppler track, a few light showers out over Door County, uh, changing to snow flurries over upper Michigan. Uh, there are freeze warnings in effect south of Wisconsin as the growing season has started there. Uh, but freeze warnings from Iowa and Illinois, southward and northern Missouri with frost advisories as far south south is southern Missouri is saying that you know we're starting to get into the growing season to the south of us but temperatures are just pretty cold high temperatures barely around freezing in International Falls Minnesota the Twin Cities didn't even hit the 40 degree mark today Madison was just shy of 50 but that was for a brief period of time and then the clouds thickened up and temperatures dropped back into the low to mid 40s for much of the afternoon um, even down to the south temperatures in the 50s to around 60 down by St. Louis that's well below normal for this time of year current temperatures are already in the 30s the jet stream 
volume starting to sag to the south, and we're seeing these little ripples kind of going along the jet stream. It doesn't give it a chance to move back north like it did Saturday when we had that, that warm up for about a day and a half. But to the north, the cold air continues to build across Canada, and so we keep getting these little shots coming through as every little weather system moves on through. The one that came through over the weekend, again, warmed us up and then cooled us down because the main area of low pressure is now out in Hudson Bay in Canada, but it's dragged a couple of cold fronts through, and the second one has dropped temperatures from the 40s into the 30s, and to the north and west, temperatures are already in the 20s across northern Minnesota. Compared to 24 hours ago, we're still down about 10 to almost 15 degrees across the state of Wisconsin. And as we take a look at the Climate Prediction Center, 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, guess what? More of the same. Northern part of the country, colder than normal. Southern part of the country, warmer than normal. And as we look at this, the precipitation outlook, large part of the country expected to see above normal precipitation, but not high probabilities. We'll probably see some light rain showers off and on from Thursday through the middle part of next week, but none of them appear to be very heavy. Uh, maybe a couple of thunderstorms on Saturday and then about Wednesday of next week. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook that takes us through May 9th and again below normal temperatures centered right over our part of the country with the warmer than normal weather out to the southwest and down near the Gulf Coast and again precipitation above normal but not with very high probabilities. For tomorrow look for partly sunny skies but that's not going to help the temperature very much. 46 will probably be the best we can do with a west and northwesterly breeze at 10 to 20 miles per hour and as we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast you can see those temperatures in the 40s for Wednesday and Thursday. A chance for a shower late Wednesday afternoon maybe even Mixing with a couple of flurries Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. Thursday, a chance of showers. The best chances for rain over the weekend. Highs low to mid 50s. Maybe a thunderstorm on Saturday. And some shower chances in the next week. Maybe by the end of the week, we'll get temperatures up to the lower 60s. And coming up in sports, the Bucks need one more win to move on to the next round of the playoffs. We hear from the Greek freak on how he and the team plan to make that happen. Now, first worn weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's Terrific Tuesdays at hy V. This Tuesday, our special recipe brats, 10 for only $8. And get select cheese it crackers for only 99 cents while supplies last. Scan the QR code or check out HyVeeDeals.com for more deals. Back again at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison with another big winner. <laughs> We're here with Pete who just won $50,000 on progressive slots. How did you do it, Pete? Well, first off, you get your rewards club card. You put that in the slots, the slot of your choice, of course. Now, there I am. I'm seeing that machine. It, it, it's looking at me. We're vibing. And it's, I, it's vibing? It's okay. vibing with me. And then I start pressing buttons. Mash those buttons, as many buttons as you can press. Buttons. There you have it, folks. Advice from a winner. <laughs> well, I guess it's all about the buttons. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. It shouldn't take a storm of biblical proportions to find out who you can count on. It shouldn't take a four foot diameter oak tree in your kitchen to find out who you can trust. It shouldn't take the worst to bring out our best, but sometimes it does. And that's the silver lining. At Wheatman Lawn Care, we believe that a lush, beautiful lawn should be enjoyed by the whole family. That's why we offer a kid and pet friendly program to create a healthier, greener, weed-free lawn that your whole family can enjoy. Our program includes effective applications of targeted weed control and slow-release golf course quality fertilizer to achieve real results. Call or click today for your free quote or sign up now and see the Weedman difference. Doesn't your family deserve a Weedman lawn? <laughs> For decades, Washington politicians have promised to lower the cost of prescription drugs. But every year, the prices go up. Why? Because Republicans like Ron Johnson, and let's be honest, too many Democrats don't have the guts to stand up to the pharmaceutical companies. I'm Sarah Godlewski, and I will. I want to bring practical solutions to Washington. That's what I've done as state treasurer. I'm Sarah Godlewski, and the big drug companies may not approve this message, but I do. After my accident, I needed help. The car was wrecked, and then the bills. The insurance company was giving me the runaround. You don't need talk from the insurance company. You need to take back what's been taken away from you. Get every dollar you're entitled to. This is your one opportunity to go after all the money you're owed. 
everything. Tell them you mean business. Call 800-800-5678. Hupi and Abraham, right now. It's Terrific Tuesdays at hy V. This Tuesday, our special recipe brats, 10 for only $8. And get select cheese at crackers for only 99 cents while supplies last. Scan the QR code or check out hy for more deals. Over the last few seasons, the Bucks have shown what they can do when they are faced with adversity. Instead of letting Chris Middleton's injury drag them down, it actually lit a fire under them. The Bucks posted back-to-back -back blowout wins in Chicago, and just yesterday, holding the Bulls under 100 points for the third time in this series. So now, the only thing that stands between the Deer and the next round is one win, which they could earn in just a couple of days on their home court. But they got to maintain the same fight as they have in the previous two games. You know, when things don't go well, you got to either you fold or you quit or, you know, find another way to uh, affect the game and come out even, uh, you know, on top, come out uh, stronger. And I think that's what our team did. And uh, But it's not, the job's not done yet. We have one more game on Wednesday uh, back home. Hopefully we can do our job. And tip-off for Game 5 is at 6.30 on Wednesday night. And if the Bucks win, they will go on to play the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals. The Celtics just completed the sweep of Brooklyn tonight. Brewers back home for one game with the Giants. Both teams on quite the hot streak lately, having won seven of their last ten. Cruz bats. Oh, no. <clears throat> sorry. Cruz bats get going in the second inning. Mike Brasso with an RBI single. That scores Keston Hira. And the score holds for a bit. Corbin Burns is dishing it tonight. He goes six and two-thirds innings with, two, with only giving up two hits, no runs, and he fans 11. But the Giants go on to win this one four to two. The border battle doubleheader has been rescheduled. The Badgers and Gophers will play next Wednesday in Minneapolis. The first game will start at 1, but before the Badgers head out that way, they're going to have to take care of the Nittany Lions. UW is on the road this weekend for 3 when the series begins on Friday at 5. And the Madcaps start their playoff run with a bang. They take game 1 of their best of 3 series with the Youngstown Phantoms winning 3-2 to two tonight. The Caps just need one more to move on to the next round of the Clark Cup playoffs. Game 2 is tomorrow at 7.05. NFL Draft Week is finally here, and the Packers head into the three-day stretch with 11 total picks, four of which are in the top 60. And with round one beginning on Thursday, there's a lot of talk about which direction the Packers are going to head in in those early rounds. An area that has been a hot topic this offseason is wide receiver after losing several veterans. <clears throat> but according to Brian Gutekunst, they are actually looking at every position. And with the NFL Draft being just three days away, the front office is just now getting comfortable with their board. I think we're kind of getting down to it. You know, I think there's certainly some, you know, some, you know, situational conversations. Um, you know, Matt and I will get together tomorrow and kind of work through some things. But really, I think over the weekend, we got very comfortable with the board where we were at. And, um, you know, just, you know, trying not to, to make a mistake at the last minute here. Round one begins at 7 on Thursday. The Packers have the 22nd and 28th pick in the first round. We'll be right back. Madison Magazine's Best of Madison 2022. Vote for your favorites online, including Fry Construction for Best Kitchen and Bath Design, Best Roofer, and Best Window and Doors. Vote Fry Construction at MadisonMagazine.com. It's like I'm downloading in slow motion. Wish we had better internet. That's right, it's me, Charlie. Wish specialist for Spectrum. Let's get that wish granted. How? Spectrum internet delivers speeds of 200 megabits for a stronger connection on all your devices. Here, here, yeah, and here. Plus, get a free modem and free desktop security to keep your kids safe online. Get Spectrum internet for $49.99 a month. Call 833-768-4999. Why do we need all these remotes? I wish our shows were in one place. Spectrum TV makes it easy to find your favorites. Plus, you'll have access to over 85,000 titles on demand. And with the free Spectrum TV app, you can watch live sports, news, and more on any device, anywhere. Get Spectrum TV for $49.99 a month. Call 833-768-4999. I wish we didn't have a contract. Granted. Oh, he's good. Switch to Spectrum Internet or TV or get them both for $49.99 a month each. All with no contracts. Call 833-768-4999. With broken supply chains and lives disrupted, businesses like Amazon have invested to deliver on time for you. 
and help hundreds of thousands of small businesses gain access to millions of online shoppers. But Washington politicians have a law that could break Prime's guaranteed two-day free delivery and threaten our fragile economic recovery. Tell your senators, don't break our Prime. Oppose us 2992. Paid for by CCIA. a Honda, the adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the rugged power of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. Keep your yard looking green with Menards Garden Center. From fertilizer to hoses, the Garden Center is the place to shop. Forever Green Weed and Feed is a ready-to-use formula that fertilizes your lawn and controls weeds in one application. Just $14.99 after 11% rebate. Schultz Garden Soil gives you better results than plain topsoil for growing flowers and vegetables. Plus, it feeds plants for up to six months. Just $4.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Madison Magazine's Best of Madison 2022. Vote for your favorites online, including Fry Construction for Best Kitchen and Bath Design, Best Roofer, and Best Window and Doors. Vote Fry Construction at MadisonMagazine.com. Every day, News 3 Now investigates. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. And Gary's went back one more time. Final check of the forecast. Do we want to look at it? No, <laughs> we don't. Man, yeah. it's, it's just won't, can't warm up other yeah. than that one day on Saturday. There we go. We're all, we're all whining about it. But uh, yes, we are, there's, Gary. There's, there's no way around it. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Not raining here. Okay, let's look at the good side. Or snowing. Uh, skies are still generally cloudy. There are a few light showers up over Door County and some flurries up near Lake Superior. You know, it's the end of April and we're still talking about snow in parts of the Midwest. Temperatures right now drop below 40 here in Madison. We're at 39 degrees. Still lower 40s, closer to Lake Michigan, but to the west, temperatures already in the middle 30s. The skies clear out. We're going to be down to about 30 degrees by morning. High temperature tomorrow, 46 is about the best we can do, and 45 on Wednesday and 48 on Thursday. Rain chances go up for the end of the week and especially into the weekend. Temperatures go up a little bit, but not certainly enough. We should be in the low to mid 60s, and we won't get back to 60 until Thursday of next week with shower chances leading up to that day, too. All right, Gary, we'll deal with it. Thanks for joining us. Joining us for News 3 Now at 10, we hope you have a great Monday night.